Hello, it's John T here from NJ 3D Printing Studio. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, show you how I clean the MK10 nozzle. Now, I know everybody's going to tell me, yeah, but just do the cold pool and uh, I don't mean to be nasty, but it just doesn't work for me. But maybe I'm too old school or just that's the way I do things. Now, that's a MK10 nozzle for those of you that don't understand the machine here that is the guider 2 that I use the MK10 nozzle in the tools we're going to use is a 19 millimeter open ended spanner I've got a little socket drive here or ratchet drive sorry for 9 millimeter socket in it a couple of screwdrivers we're only going to use a Phillips screw I've got a piece of PTFE tube that I have pre-cut to 44 millimeters in length then I've got a four millimeter end mold, I've got a four millimeter chamfer tool and I actually have a 90 degree Beck plastic deburring tool. The Beck, Beck plastic deburring tool I use for the PTFE tube because I buy it in a one meter length. I will deburr the one side just slightly like that and just remove the burr. Now that piece will be going up into the extruded art end and then the part that is sharp will go into the bottom of the MK10 nozzle. Now let's start there at the machine then I can show you how I do that. Okay now I can't get it to focus but in any case the nozzle temperature I have preset now to 200 degrees sorry 220 degrees and I'm just heating up the nozzle so that when we take out the nozzle out of here it's already at its working temperature. Now what I'm going to do so long as I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver and I'm just going to undo this one here and then I have to overpower the screws or it was just slipping a little bit and then this one as well and believe me <laughs> try not to burn yourself with it happens and it happens quite a lot especially with me now the nozzle isn't really dirty but just for explaining and trying to make the video I'm going to clean it. Now what I also use, I just use some normal plain two-ply toilet paper, it's nothing fancy. And I just hold the top here of the block and then I just give it this like little wipe here and that just gets all that, I don't know, just gunk when we pull it comes off. I was printing ABS, it makes this like ABS sweat I want to call it. It's on there. Now before I undo it I always check the rotation of the ratchet. Just make sure I know it sounds so idiotic. We say left for loose. And I mean we're men we don't have to do shit like that but breaking things costs money and then you can see there that wasn't really tight on there. And I've got like my other videos that I showed there's a little piece of toilet paper in there that it doesn't fall inside there. Now just undo that and then there you can see the nozzles out. The nozzle is not horrifying, horrifyingly dirty but I'll show you now what I use or how I use the 4mm end mill and the chamfer tool inside there to try to clean it up. Make sure you won't be able to see but let's just do that quickly. Okay, now we've moved to the top. Here I've got the 4mm chamfer tool. I'm just going to put it there. Probably a bad idea. And then yeah, I've got a 4mm end mill. I know this is a coated Franken. You don't need anything really fancy because you're not doing any high speed machining. I do work in a machine shop and this was what I got at work and I've used it now for three years. Now we're just going to slip it in here. Before I start, I don't really know if you can see inside there, but it's completely pitch black inside there. Then once we start cleaning it, and you will actually see that now I can see there's the red ABS coming out on my finger. And it doesn't really look red in here on the screen. In any case, so I'm just going to clean that up. And there. There we go. Now you should be able to see if it wants to focus. It's just difficult, there's not much light in the bottom there. You can see it's starting to clean up the bottom because the flat section at the bottom, which you grab, just cleaning up with the end mill, is where the PTFE tube seats. Uh, there it's coming out now. Oh, 
that looks a lot better already now if I can get it to focus you'd actually be able to see that it's nice and clean right round and then <coughs> we're going to use the four millimeter chamfer tool this is a machine chamfer tool now it just goes inside and that tapered section in the bottom just where it guides into the 0.4 hole it'll be for that section there now, that looks better already I just blew it clean now and we can go back in there again there now you can see it's nice and clean on the inside it's nice and shiny I can't show it nicely on the camera but in any case I try to clean it up as much as possible on the inside that there's no fouling or anything it's just my way of doing it so I use the end mold first and I scratch it like this I have where out of frustration <laughs> that I couldn't get it out. I have put the electric drill on here, just a cordless drill, and just cut it a little bit. And then you'll see that some brass will come out. It's not going to be the end of the world. And then I also clean it up with this four flute chamfer tool. And then I get a nice finish at the bottom there. Now just remember to blow it out nicely. I just usually take it and then I tap it against the wooden table like this to make sure that there's nothing inside there. Because if there's a little bit of a uh, <clears throat> brush shaving inside there it might actually clog the hole again which is not going to be really funny so okay let's put this back in again okay now we're here at the bottom again I'm just going to pull out this old PTFE tube just to show you this is my previous one it actually doesn't look that bad although unfortunately if you pull it out you tend to screw it up seriously now, here's the new one that you've got to make sure is if you put it in put it in with the chamfered side to the top it just helps to guide the filament in and don't be reckless like me and burn your fingers I'm just going to screw that one in lightly like that and you're going to check your ratchet spanner always and you're not going to over tighten it you're just going to just lightly Hold that with the 19 spanner and just, just that, just hold the top of the wrench, just like this with, with the three fingers. You don't need much torque and that's it. Nothing fancy. And then once that's back in again, you can grab the Phillips screwdriver and you can just assemble this section again, just like that. Now, these are self tappers that go into a plastic component, so please guys. Don't over tighten it. I'm pretty sure some oak's gonna say, Yeah, oh, but you've got to tighten this thing to so many Newton meters. But if you think about it, you'll probably get the oak that thinks that this top cover must be screwed to this bottom cover with that screw. And I hope that doesn't make sense because it's not supposed to. Well, well there we go. That's it. If the camera wants to focus, it would have been easier. But I hope you guys learned something. And this is my really random way of doing it. Thanks for watching. Right.